Let's bring in ABC News medical contributor, epidemiologist, Dr. John Brownstein. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, doctor. So let's talk first about these vaccines, right? With these new variants, how effective are the current vaccines we have at giving us immune protection against these variants? Yeah, good morning, Eva. I mean, I think that is the big concern right now. We have these new variants that are emerging. We always knew that mutations would happen. The more you have virus out there, the more mutations it accumulates. And so the versions that we see out there have these mutations on the spike protein, which is a way that you enter into the cells with the virus. And because of that, um, it's more transmissible. And the concern we have is that with these mutations, we get diminished efficacy of the vaccine. So, so far, the data looks good. We've seen data from Modern and others that the vaccines have a good amount of buffer. There was a study published yesterday looking at neutralizing antibodies, although it does show that antibody levels against the South African variant were about six times lower. So that is concerning. And what's great is Moderna is now considering adjusting some of its vaccine strategies, right? We have a two dose uh, vaccine uh, four weeks apart. But the idea is what about adding in a booster? And maybe that booster would be just a third dose of the exact same vaccine, or maybe one that includes uh, protection against this new variant. And so it's all about adjusting our vaccination plans to where the virus is moving. Um, and so hopefully um, we will be able to think about future vaccine strategies. But currently it's just more important than ever to get vaccinated when it's your turn, because the more this virus is around, the more it will mutate. Well, let's talk about those mutations, those variants. This highly contagious UK variant has now been found in 26 states. Minnesota now reporting a case of the Brazilian variant. With these different strains becoming more transmissible, should we be doing anything differently? Should we be preparing ourselves emotionally and mentally for future lockdowns? What do you think is in the future for us? Yeah, well, listen, these new variants are concerning. I mean, this one out of Brazil, we call it P1, has been circulating in Manaus in Brazil since at least December. And we've seen, you know, rapid increases in cases, even in populations that we thought had general immunity. And so, you know, the concern is these variants will spread more quickly, but it's not really about doing anything radically different. It's about doubling down on the things that we know work, right? So masking has been at the center of our response, but we don't do it consistently. So, and we've known that if you can increase masking in a community, you can drive transmission down, but maybe it's about double masking or about using better masks. So it's taking the same things that we know work, but just doing it slightly better. Social distancing, hand washing, limiting outdoor gatherings. These are all the same precautions, but we just have to be more vigilant. If we can do that, we can avoid the lockdowns that we've seen in other places like the UK. We heard Dr. Fauci and Stephanie's piece talking about uh, the distribution of the vaccine and how it's not exactly even. Some places have tons of vaccines, some don't have any. What more can and should be done with the Biden administration trying to fix some of those supply problems that these states are having? Yeah, it's really uh, so challenging to see these bottlenecks that are occurring, and it's really about better coordination between federal government and states. Clearly, there's a lot of confusion about supply chain. There is excess supply, but it's in some of the wrong places. Some of the hospitals and nursing homes have earmarked amounts, but that they have excess. We need to figure out how to shift those doses into the community. Um, obviously, it's about opening up more vaccination sites, hiring people, uh, additional supplies like syringes. And then, of course, it's going to be all about last mile delivery. How do we get to those that are hard to reach? It's, of course, improving the infrastructure, potentially bringing in FEMA, but figuring out other types of innovative strategies like mobile clinics and on-demand services. And then finally, you know, there is a tech issue and the digital divide, you know, the issues of people figuring out how to book appointments, understand eligibility, and then also, of course, combating uh, hesitancy that's out there. I think if we can get those things done, we can start to inch towards the 1.5 million vaccines delivered a day. It's going to take some time to ramp that up, I think, though. Yeah, I've talked to so many older Americans, 80 and 90 year olds, who just struggle to get these appointments online. Uh, we also heard from Dr. Fauci that he thought vaccinating America likely won't finish until the fall. So I think the question everybody wants the answer to is when can we expect herd immunity so that we can go back to some sense of normal? 
Yeah, it's a question on that, that's on everyone's mind, of course. Herd immunity is that sort of ma magic number that we get the pro proportion of the population either vaccinated or naturally sort of immunized through, you know, infection through the virus. You get that number high enough. We think it's about 70 to 80 percent. So that's still a lot of people, 200, 200 to 300 million people uh, either vaccinated or have had, you know, previous infection. I think if we can ramp up vaccines, we can uh, start to approach that number by the summer. Um, you know, it really depends also on these new variants and how that changes the game. But at the end of the day, we have to remember, you know, what we're trying to do is bring down hospitalizations and deaths. If we can do that, and I think we can do that pretty quickly over the next few months because we're targeting those at highest risk, I think that begins to allow us to see that light at the end of the tunnel, even if we're not quite at herd immunity. Unfortunately, I think we're going to start to have to rewire our brains that, you know, this virus is going to be circulating uh, with us probably for a long time. But as long as we can sort of control the impact in hospitalizations and deaths, I think we can start to live a much more normal life again. Some optimism this morning. Dr. Brownstein, thank you so much for being with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.